Let's talk about what's involved in managing a supercar collection. We have a lot to get on with, effectively a day or two or three in the life of a supercar collector. The SLS Black Series has just gone out. I'll explain what's happening with that. The GT Black Series needs to go for an MOT. The ABBA, which I recently bought, hasn't had a service in about six years. So we need to go and drop that off. A couple of the Shamimobiles that are new in the collection need to have trackers installed. So Global Telemetrics are gonna be joining us. But not only that, we've also got some big changes in terms of the office, the mezzanine, moving things around, and a lot that I need to explain and basically lead up to some big news that I've got coming in the not too distant future. So we've got a ton to get cracking on with. Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Let's do this. Come along behind the scenes of what's involved in looking after all of these things. One thing that we need to take a look at later involves the Clio V6 and potentially a puncture. When I was going around checking tire pressures, something we do with all of the cars, go and check they're all still good every couple of months. One of them on this was really low and I don't quite yet know what the problem with it is. So we're gonna come back to that a little bit later on. Step one today is to finally send this on its merry way over to Avant Garde. It will need a full annual service and MOT, the usual stuff, but also I've asked Steve and the team to basically have a complete look at it. There was an engine warning light that popped up every now and then. It's not on at the moment, but during the Millimilia tour, it had a hard life. It's been already to Topaz detailing. So we've got some new paint protection film on some of the parts like the lower front splitter and generally tidied it up visually, but it's a big car, it needs to be looked after properly. So got the key, we'll get a cold start of this, which always sounds amazing, and then go and load it up outside. Oh yeah, that always sounds amazing. Every time this thing goes anywhere, I know I'm gonna miss it. Look at that color, mystic blue, absolutely stunning. Blue and silver, it's a thing, I promise you. Looks insane. But Mr. Turbo Transport is outside, so let's go get the shutter opened up, and pull this out to pop it in. It is a beautiful morning here and we have a beautiful car and we also have Mr. Turbo, how you doing? Morning. morning, morning, morning. Ready to get it loaded into the familiar trailer where many a Shmimobile has been transported. Um, yeah, towed by the Ram over to Avant Garde, a couple of hours away from here, but if I had the time I would drive it. Unfortunately, none of the time today. So, oh, look at the color in the sunshine. So it's gonna be going by trailer. Isn't it crazy to think this car now has about 27,000 miles on it? Well used and enjoyed. That's what they're supposed to do though. So good times. Who doesn't like a V8 in the morning, hey Tony? Gone for now. See it again soon. Thanks for the safe hands, Tony. I want to bring you upstairs because up here, a lot is changing, a lot connected to something that's been happening in the background that I've alluded to a couple of times, but it's all becoming very serious very quickly. And often nowadays, we have more people here than you might realize. Of course, on filming days like today, people tend to work from home. So obviously you don't see that necessarily, but what it means is that we need to kind of reconfigure everything ahead of basically introducing this all to you very soon. But the middle room has been the main office for the last year since we built all of this. And it's quite messy and cluttered right now, but we're gonna move a lot of that to what was the collectibles room that used to house my Swatch collection at the end. That will become my main office, which is actually what I had in the original plans. The middle room will become a slightly different office and then a meeting room. And that means we've got a lot to set up and to figure out. It's all very exciting. It's all happening very quickly, but I need to sort out the configuration and layout of everything first. What we are doing now then is installing the tracker in the ABBA. The guys from Global Telemetrics who are here have just done the Roma um, because with all of these cars, firstly, Global Telemetrics have this amazing system where you can see where your entire fleet is and where the cars are moving around, which obviously with all of this lot is really quite fun. But secondly, in addition to that, when you have cars of either high value, like the Roma, or cars like Abarths, which are, well, highly thievable, to be completely honest, having a tracker helps with the insurance, helps with the security and safety of the car, and means that you know what's going on. So obviously this is gonna get one installed, as with every single car in this garage. While the guys are installing that, I've also just booked the 675 LT in for a service, which, believe it or not, is now eight years old. I've had that car for eight years. It's approaching a decade. We often find ourselves just working down here. But obviously the idea is that upstairs should be the main office. I do, however, have something turning up tomorrow, which I'm gonna to show you, 
which is gonna be mega in this room. In the meantime, let me show you what's going on here, which will explain all of the boxes that we have down there. And I can show you the view that I have from my new desk position, which is kind of what I always wanted to have. So come on in, because courtesy of the sponsor of today's video, FlexiSpot, we have three new desks. These are the E7 Pro. I've gone with the black frame and the ebony desktop. Now, not only do they look the part, but they also have height adjustment. So you have the benefits of this because you can either sit at it or stand at it, which carries health benefits like looking after your back, your posture, and of course, the flexibility that comes with that from being able to work at whatever height you'd like. Now, there are memory positions or you can go all the way up or just press the button and it will take it straight back down to its resting position. They're also super sturdy, I've got to say. Give it a little bit of a wobble, fixed in place. And of course, not only that, they can also support up to 160 kilos. I'm not quite that heavy, but I can sit on it and then press my memory position here to take it up to my desk working height, my standing height which feels a little bit crazy. Now, not only that, this is the eighth anniversary of FlexiSpot and they've got some big savings going on. So all the information is down below, including on the 19th of August, you can save and get a chance to get up to 50% off on one of these. So do check them out because also, for example, underneath, check this out. We've got some cable management with the brackets under here, all of the highest quality components. And I've got to say, having built all three of them myself yesterday, the tools that were provided, the instructions, all super clear, super easy, exactly what you want. And you know what the best bit is? As I stand right here, the view that I now have working at my new FlexiSpot desk with that view out over the garage, that is the stuff of my dreams. So a big thanks to FlexiSpot because these are perfect for the purpose. Of course, I can return it back down, bring my chair in, we'll get it all set up today and start bringing things in, bring them over. But this is absolutely spot on what we needed. So all the information is down below. Big thanks again to FlexiSpot for sponsoring today's video. Next up, both cars need to go out to get their systems basically configured and linked. So Abarth out first, Rome out second, and they will be locked and loaded on the system. That V8 sounds good on the cold start. It makes a very nice sound. So let's swing this out also. Lovely. We have two very different Italian cars parked side by side here. And I've also got to give a shout out to Julian because he has done the trackers in every single one of the Schmiebe vehicles. <laughs> Basically, I think literally everyone since day dot with Global Telemetrics. So massive, massive thanks to everything they do because it is by far the best system for all this stuff. The cars are now set up, that's all done. But there's a gigantic mess in here of things that we're going to take out because I'm going to start the process and I've moved a couple of things already. So you'll notice the big maxi swatches that I have. I've swapped around the ones that were in this room to that room and vice versa. Things like my 4GT picture, that's going to move next door because this was from Garen Nikogosian, the designer of the 4GT and is a very prized possession. I'd like to have that in my office room. The basic stuff like chargers, cables and all of this jazz, obviously I need to move. So I'll just take this clumsily on my chair for a second because it's going to take a while but this is an opportunity to tidy up as we go and to make all of this a little bit neater and smoother because at the end of the day we've got a ton of stuff just about everywhere and while we might not have a 4GT at the moment we do have a 4GT branded desk chair which I always appreciate I've actually had this for about five years now but carefully does it sliding down the balcony out here to pull this into this room through the glass doors and start to have a little bit more of a setup. Obviously, I will tidy all of this neatly into the desk and uh, cable tidies a little bit later, but this room's gonna feel nice. So my current plan, I think, is main picture, the GT picture there, which will be cool because you'll see it from downstairs. And we'll put a TV up on the wall here which obviously has the security cameras and all that stuff as we currently have in the main office. And I've got um, a, a unit that I've ordered for here, some drawers and stuff. Despite having only just brought it in again for a photo, we are gonna take this now because this is going to Veloce to get a service. So we've got a short little drive over there. We haven't done too many miles with it since collecting, about 160 or so, but sounds good. Let's get it over and go and uh, get this dealt with and get it ready. Although as I head out from here, it's not a bad view, is it? Driving out of the barn, past all the Zembos. Nice. Right, out we head. It's when you drive a car that you realize what else is wrong with it. Because right now the air conditioning is blasting 
but it's not blasting any cold air at me. So this is as good as useless right now. We will go windows down for the time being and uh, maybe get that regassed as well. So this, as I mentioned, I bought a month or two ago. It's a car that hadn't been serviced for about six years. It hadn't even been driven or MOT'd for about three or four years at the point at which I purchased it. So safe to say, I've not yet given it a full rag, a proper run around because I knew that it needed to go somewhere to have a proper look at. And we're heading to Velocities of London who come highly recommended Alpha Fiat Abarth specialist to go and basically give this thing a check over, to give it the proper oil change, to do a cam belt. It should have a cam belt every 5,000, sorry, 50,000 miles or maybe every five years or something like that. So it'll get that changed. And we'll see what else. I think it's gonna be one of those when it's there. What else is needed? We have arrived. Here we are. First ever time coming to visit. But um, I guess we'll head in and go work out where we're going, where we're putting this, and um, say hello and get this dropped off. This little thing is now in the care of the team here, but I'm very quickly going to show you around because the most 124s of anywhere in the country, some of the Abarths here, but obviously plenty of other very nice things, including come through here into one of the showroom areas. I wasn't familiar too much with this one before, the Yamaha version of the 595. Some other very nice Abarths all around and a pair of four C's. And I tell you what, they've held money remarkably well. I remember back in the days when, of course, Seen Through Glass had one of these and always kind of had a little bit of a soft spot for them. I tell you what, 40 odd grand, bit of a collectible, kind of a cool little thing. I might actually take one for another drive at some point just to remind myself what they're all about. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm gonna come back here a couple of days time to pick up my little one once it's all done and they've let me know what's, what's up with it, really. All right, okay, back to base we go. You'll have to accept my apologies for the mess over here. You might know that we recently dispatched a lot of Schmoo the cows, so we've got a lot of boxes around, but what I came to grab is a tire inflator because I want to head over to the Clio V6 and we'll go and see how that is doing. This is, of course, our DeWalt equipment in the Jura cabinets, which all works really nicely and makes life super easy. So come with me. Let's go the safer way around. I was going to walk between the Zembos, but that just feels like a really bad idea for inevitably getting something wrong because when I tested this the other day and it was visibly flat and I try and run around the cars as often every three, four, five months, something like that. Depends how often they're being driven to check the tire pressures. When I checked the Clio V6, one of them was like obviously down and not in a good state. And I'm a little bit anxious now, a couple of days on, whether it's gonna have gone down anymore, whether it's a valve, what the problem might be. So let's get this hooked up and we shall find out. So it should be 29. I would say 28.9 is about 29, which is interesting. That either means, because the valve is up top, it's okay. Huh, maybe we just do it exactly as 29, just to be doubly safe. That could be fine. That could be completely fine. I don't know. We'll leave it for now and we'll see what happens next. What's up next is to use this incredible Schmeemobile because we need to give the floor a little bit of a clean. Now, it's not bad, but if you stay on top of this, it will always be in better shape. And obviously I bought this for a reason, so we might as well use it. Are we on? Did I do that correctly? Off we go. Yeah, we'll give this um, a run over of the roadway just because so many cars have come in and out. Tidy up some of the dirt marks on the, on the main tarmac and then uh, give it a dry afterwards. Well, here we are, the reality of a garage and a big car collection, hey? half your life sweeping and cleaning the floor. But you gotta do what you gotta do. This thing is getting some good use here. After now doing the whole of this end of the room, as we make our way back up towards the other end, it fascinates me how you can see the Roma has been moved. The difference on the track, you don't really notice how the dust and dirt, I guess, builds up until you see it like this. And you can see the exact line of where I did in front of the car, but not behind the car. Obviously some water splats from drying cars coming in from outside. But uh, yeah, we'll continue, get all of this done for now. Obviously when the cars are out, we'll try and get some more of the spaces cleaned up as well. Quick view from upstairs then. That is much neater and tidier. Even the curb stones or the red and white lines down the side look nicer. Last little bit to dry. And yeah, nice progress today. Very nice progress. A few more things in here to organize and move around. 
but we're starting to get somewhere, starting to feel like a, a new office, a new setup. Great. Fast forward, we have a lot more cardboard, we have some more boxes, we have plenty of things to update you on because there have been some changes upstairs, but we're gonna save that for the moment because first up right now, we need to take the GT Black Series, which believe it or not, is now over three years old. So here in the UK, when a car is three years old, it has to go for an MOT check. It then has to do that annually from that point onwards. So this car has reached three years old. In fact, it did a couple of weeks ago. You can't drive a car once its MOT has expired other than directly to a pre-booked MOT test or back home from said test. So we have pre-booked a test at Godlimans. We're gonna take this over now. And that means of course, the motions to unplug the CTEC first, then get this off the lift, then um, yeah, take it out for a little run, which is actually needed anyway, because it's been about six weeks since it had a drive. So we'll stretch the legs of the GT Black Series. The SLS Black Series, of course, has gone already to avant-garde. It doesn't need a service because it had one on my tour in spring around Germany and it hasn't done too many miles since, but it might need one before the next trip because I got something in the works for this. I got something very fun in the works. Right, let me get cracking on with this. Let's get this started. Cold start, GT Black Series. Um, okay, get that pulled off, come around the back. I'm glad I planned this to have decent space around there. Just makes moving everything around a little bit easier. Um, and obviously this is just high enough to not hit the ground coming off the lifts. Very convenient. Smooth, simple, steady does it. One GT Black Series, ready to do a few more miles. There is something about this car. Every time I get back in it, I mean, I've done a lot of miles in here, right? This thing's been all around literally the world. And just driving out, yeah, okay, it's a big car when you go past a truck like that. And it's a bumpy car on the country lanes like this, but those noises and the feeling of it, and just being in a car that's so comfortable and practical, yet another growing record holder at one point, and just all around crazy. So we go through the tunnel. <laughs> Sorry, the child in me will never grow up when I get into the Black Series. And I have some big plans ahead, like I said. So while service isn't due by my uh, by time, sorry, in here, because it's only been five months or so, four months, it might be nearly due by mileage, especially if I'm gonna do a big tour. That's the kind of thing we need to plan for. If there's a big trip coming, it will have exceeded massively by then. So we need to make sure it does go in. Anyway, step one is here to go to Godlimans. Well, it's always fun to hear it from the outside as well, because John's gonna pop this up onto the MOT ramp. We're actually here with the ABBA, not all that long ago, getting that through its MOT. But this can go up and get through the motions. They have to test a bunch of things on it, lights, that kind of stuff. And hopefully it will pass with flying colors given it's fully serviced and used and up to scratch. Time to pull it out, all passed with flying colors. We've got our MOT certificate. And this thing ready to take it back to the barn. Nice and simple, very easily done. It's obviously exactly what you want. The GT Black Series is back on the lift, but there is something in the lounge that I need to show you guys. Something that has been years in the making. I've probably spoken on video about this idea more than 10 times. I just didn't really know how to execute it, where to begin. And I need to come and show you what we've got here. Not just one thing, technically a couple of things that all link together, but take a look at this, at the new coffee table here in the lounge. How many times have I spoken about making an engine block coffee table? Well, it's now happened. And there's a bit of a story as to what this is. See if you can guess right now what engine that might be. I mean, you can clearly tell it's a V8 and given I do quite like my V8s as I spoke about extensively in the Roma video, this is actually a block that I got from Gad, Anthony at Gad Tuning, who's done a couple of things with the different cars. It's a Hydrolocked M156 from a W204 C63, which is one of the coolest engines of all time, the 6.2 liter NA AMG V8. It's then been to enginetables.co.uk. I commissioned this piece with them. We sent up the block, they did the work to paint match it, as you can see, to the walls that are around us here at the barn, literally the same paint color. And not only that, to finish it and to present it like this, the glass top actually comes from ESG, who provided the switchable glass that we have here in the lounge. That thing is so perfect, it's exactly what I had in mind. Not only that, we also have the crank side table, which engine tables also completed to match in the exact same color scheme. These are quite frankly perfect, and they even, I'm just gonna show you because I popped it up here for the time being, the additional little piece that they presented as well. How cool is that, right? Little business card holder that we could have at the front door. What a cool set. Like this is 
This is the icing on the cake of this room. This is exactly what I wanted here, an engine block coffee table. It's just something that is so on theme and with a story, because of course the M156 evolved into the M159, which is the engine in the SLS Black series. Yeah, I'm a happy boy about this. Quite obviously expensive to buy a block and get it painted and get it done like this and made pretty, but absolutely worth it. This is so cool. You can see then that room has changed a little bit. It's a little bit emptier and there's no picture on the wall because this is becoming quickly more and more the office that I have in mind. And it's also nice and cool in here with the AC. Everything's kind of taking place. We've got the picture up on the wall. We've got a TV up on the wall, which is great as well. We've got the Ikea that's downstairs, cabinet that we need to build, which is gonna be just for storing some stuff and printer and that kind of thing. But yeah, starting to take shape here. It's starting to work out. I'm excited about this. We've still gotta go and get the Abarth, of course, as well. Go pick that up. And, oh, I'm trying to think what else is needed. Everything from up here is looking pretty cool right now, though. Just a bit of brainstorming, working things out one step at a time making some nice progress here, but this is really and truly what it's like with a garage. There's cars going everywhere. There's stuff happening all the time. There's things to unbox, pack and build and just deal with, just stuff going on. This has been my last couple of hours, basically getting this done, thanks to Handy DeWalt Tools, because once this is built, we'll at least have some storage space in here, which is gonna be helpful. And I tell you what, by the time you're on draw set number, well, draw number seven and eight, you kind of have a good idea of what you're doing. Next up, this, should go on here, I think, if I got this right. If I got this right, maybe. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Then we've got to tighten it in place, which is, again, pretty easy because I've put all of these bits in already. It's kind of funky how much you can change how this builds and put things different ways around. And then it's a case of just figuring out how the drawers go in. So, in theory, these go in there. This clicks. There we go. One more drawer in. We're nearly there. And we're done. Looking amazing. We've got the printer, we've got lots of stuff on charge, obviously camera batteries, doorbell, more power plugs, and obviously this will be for the stuff we need in here. We don't need too much stuff in the office, but hey, I'm pleased that that's up into place. And of course that view and down there is the 124 that I think we're now gonna to take to Veloci's to go collect the Ferrari Dealer 500. Brad, are you making antisocial noises? We would never make antisocial noises. Short shifter. Yeah, this is good fun. It's like extremely short. It barely moves anywhere, but it's been great. It's been good fun on tracks as well, because I've done a fair bit of track driving with it now. And I think I've got the track bug, bug and I'm going to blame you for that. Sorry for taking you in the GT Black series at the ring. Yeah, yeah, it's all, <laughs> it's all your fault. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Well, we're only a couple of minutes away now. You've also got a yellow rev counter. Retrimmed steering wheel. That was done at the same time as the 1M steering wheel by Royal Steering Wheels. Um, it's all very nice. This thing's tiny though. Like normal small cars kind of look big. Yeah, until you come up against something like this. It's just small and fun and yeah. kind of quirky. Pole positions. It's great. This is the best modification done to this car. Yeah. Without a doubt. It's deja vu. Not long ago we were here and I can see my car ready and waiting. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> Figure out where to put this without grounding it out. That's one problem with being low. And then, yes. Uh, ish maybe and then we'll go uh, pay out the bills and say thanks to the guys and get that thing back to base. Magic! We're all back. That thing sounds kind of fun. I can now actually rev it but I want to show you this room because this is now kind of set up, right? That was the objective. I've got my Rubik's Cube fridge down here and we have added, if we come in here, a motion light because this room would be pretty useless without a light but it's amazing to have the new setup to have the new view and of course to have new desks from flexi spot and this place is really becoming so cool every time we do a small extra change it just becomes even more special than ever before i'm very very happy with what we've got going on here and that's basically been the reality of managing a car collection a garage bringing you a bit more behind the scenes right the kind of things that go on although no two Days are the same because cars are going to different places, whether it's servicing this, MOT testing, GT Black Series, the SLS going off to avant-garde, building, putting things together, perfecting the garage. It feels like there's always now little things here and there that we can change and shuffle and just get on with, but at some point it's gonna be complete. We've now got new office desks set up upstairs. We finally got the amazing engine table going on down here and it's all going pretty well. It's all kind of crazy. 
I guess I've still got in my mind a few other cars that need some servicing, this, that, and the other in the next coming weeks. Obviously during this, we've actually booked in the LT for a service, literally during this video. And I'm sure there's something else as well, certainly that we've been thinking about. Anyway, that is it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you again to FlexiSpot for sponsoring today's video. All the information about the deals are down below. Big fan of the desks that we now have to work from upstairs. That's it for this time though. Thank you very much for watching guys and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.